Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Today I'd like to share with you a trick how you can use the Google API from BART for free. Yes, you heard me right, for free. Because in Google BART it works the same way as with OpenAI. That means if you want to use the API, you need to have some kind of token to uh, authenticate yourself. So for OpenAI, we know how that works. We need to go to their site and then of course we need to register and then we get some free credits, which we can use in order to play around with the ChatGPT um, API from uh, OpenAI. So how do we do this in Google Bard? Because with Google Bard, now it's available in actually almost all the countries around the world. And of course we can go to, in this case in here, our normal browser to bard.google.com. And then I can put in my prompt in here and I can have my chat with the chatbot. But how can I use actually this chatbot or the API for the chatbot in my programs, for instance, in Python? So let's figure that out. For that, what you need to do is you need to go to your browser to bart.google.com and then you need to right click on the browser and go to inspect. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. So you might have a different browser, so it looks a little bit different, but I go to inspect here. And if I do this, I'll see at first all the elements of the website. Now next, what I'm going to do is I go under the double arrows here and I go to application. If I do this and search there, I need to go to the cookie section and then to bartgoogle.com. And then what you need to do is you need to go to, in this case, let me just search it here, underscore secure dash one piece SID, this here. And if you click on it, what you should see is then uh, the API key you can use. So you get a token in here, which is under this. So if you click on this, I'll, I will not do this because otherwise you see my uh, my code here, or my token here. But what you do is, as I said, you click here, you see your token, and then you can just copy this token and use it as a token for the BART API uh, in your Python program. So let's assume you did that, you went there, you clicked on this, and you just copied the token. Then when you what you could do afterwards is I'm using uh, my editor. In this case, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but it's up to you what kind of editor you want to use. And what I did was I created this .env file. And in the .env file, I just wrote the following. I just wrote, uh, in this case, BART API underscore key equals, and then in quotes, I simply pasted exactly the token which we extracted from the website, so from the cookie. And that, that is what I stored in .env file. So afterwards, what I can do now in my BART test English here in this file, I can now simply import the BART API. So you need to install this first, which you can do via pip, for instance, or via conda. Uh, and, this, and if you run, run from BART API, you import the BART class, BART. And then because I stored my environment variable, the token in the .env file, I also need to import two modules, which is the OS module, so import OS. And I also need to import the .env, so from .env, import, and then load .env. Then I'm loading my environment variables, so simply calling load.env, which just means that now those variables are available. And then I can just store the token using, in this case, token is equal to, and then os.getenv. And then I simply uh, call my token. And because I named it bart underscore API key, that's why I can call it this way and store the value in the token. So after doing this, all we need to do now is simply instantiate our BART class. So simply call BART is equal to BART. And then we put in the token. So token is equal to token, like that. By the way, if you named it differently here, then of course you need to rename it here as well. So that's it. And now we have our chatbot with the token, so we can authenticate. And now all we need to do is simply call it by storing then the value, for instance, the result. And then I say, I want to get an answer. So it's called bart.getAnswer. And then you just need to put in your question. So for instance, if I say, uh, what, it's called that word, what is the current stock price of NVIDIA? NVDA, right? That's the ticker for NVIDIA stock. And then just put in the question mark here. And that is my question, which I have. And just remember that if I would ask this, for instance, ChatGPT, by default, the ChatGPT uh, could not answer that, right? Um, because it was trained only uh, up to data until 2021. 
of course now we have some extensions like uh, there's a way to access the internet for instance or there are also other ways like vector databases and what else so of course there are ways around that but just want to keep this in mind um, because I'm saying that and because we ask for current data here so now let's actually um, print the results and of course we get a dictionary so we could go in deeper but for now let's just print the complete result and see whether that works so print result then let me just save it okay and now I can run this in here. So if I say now Python and then for instance Bart test en dot pi like that, I can run this and let's just see what our result is. Because if everything works fine, then we should actually get now a result because we were calling successfully the API. So let me run this and let's just see what the result is. And hopefully we get some information about NVIDIA. And there it is. You can see that we get a dictionary with content. So that's why we could also call results and then go into the content section here. But then we get a lot of information here, like the current stock price on NVIDIA is this and this, yesterday was this and this, and some additional information. Now, of course, it's up to us whether we want to use this information or not, but hopefully you can see that with this token, which we called or used from the, the cookie section of our browser, we can now use the Google BART API, in this case, for free. Of course, there might be some limitations regarding the API calls, but this, of course, is true for all kind of API services, right? But uh, that's it, actually, for this video. So that is the trick. The hidden secret so far to use the Google Bard API is uh, figuring out what is this token uh, from your browser. You've seen how that works and how you can do this. And that in that way, you can now use the Google Bard API in your programming, for instance, in Python in here, and ask questions and get the results. And of course, you can now also wrap this in some kind of interface, right? So you want to have, for instance, a web interface, which looks a little better than just calling it from the console. That can be done as well. But that's it for this video. So hopefully that was interesting. And uh, I also encourage you, if you're interested in that, try that out yourself. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And also, if you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more in the future. So thanks for supporting me. As always, Take care and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.